I'm just here to learn, really. I'll give it a few more minutes because uh, I expected a few more people by now. Like, I don't need to teach everybody in this room anything. So, well, except for display, I guess. <laughs> so this class is just for you, display. Wow. Woohoo! It'll be a good practice from for us all. And for remember recordings for all the people who want to watch this afterwards. Yeah. That's true. That, that might be where the bread and butter is. That's true. And remind me, remind me to uh, watch my dang language. Yes, yes. Oh, Spud like hasn't been paying attention, so he thinks it's still in the Discord. I mean, I, I so did I until last night. I, I do not have you read numerous announcements out. I don't read. All right, that's my problem. Let me pull up the dad burn link. How do you pull up the link to Zoom? <laughs> I got it, Bob. Let me just. Where's the invite button? Can you do I, that? Yeah, I'll get the link. Um, copy link. Oh, right. He must have lost a lot of blood. What? Because he can't even think. That finger cut must have really been deep. Oh, shit. That didn't work. Hold on. What didn't work? My, I sent a bad link. Hold on. Um, now, you can say shit all you want. Just like cut the... Um, never mind. Mm. Oh, okay. That's how to do it. How do I share this? Participants, copy invite link. Thank you. Where are you, motherfuckers? Right. I'm going to see if I can get my Kali Linux uh, uh, laptop up and running. Maybe I will be able to follow along. Give me a second. I don't support Kali. I don't know. You know, I hope I'm, you know what I'm you're in doing. Kali too, Display. We're, we're all right. We'll work together. Well, this will be good too because I forgot how to get my Raspberry Pi Pico up and running so you're gonna stay busy helping us all troubleshoot apparently that's what we're here for right yeah, absolutely we're here to learn shit and learn yeah. how to teach holy shit stuff. bob bob you were right you were helpful thank you uh, yeah of course i am so you got it to pass through yeah i got the drive now it's just a matter of i want to be able to see if i can get into yeah bonnie is a sport on linux so maybe it'll work it oh of course it is this. yeah but it's just a matter of I'm doing virtual box. You you have you're a bare metal, so you're fine. You said you have a Kali lap. Uh, yeah, that too. Yay. Yeah, it's my backup laptop. Ones that actually have USB drives mm -hmm. or USB slots. <laughs> Dumbass. All right. <coughs> Damn it. Let me see there. There it is. How's everybody's day? Amazing. Um, I will give like two more minutes for people to show up and Spud to show up. And if anybody's talking in the uh, Discord, like let them know what's going on. Um, I guess I could put the actual link to the thing in Discord. If I can get this running in two minutes. There we go. Yay. I saw on the way home a what's the final destination situation waiting to happen. Oh my God, Bob. So I'm driving home and I'm Jesus. and this uh, landscaping truck drives by me on the right. Yeah. And I see this liquid pouring out of the front of his big box trailer. <laughs> Holy shit. And I'm like, what the hell? Holy shit. And then I had the windows down. So then I smelled it. It was gasoline pouring out of this guy's, I guess one of his- Holy shit. You know, landscaping gasoline jugs fell over inside the trailer and it's flooding the trailer with gas now. Dude. Yeah. I mean, I lost sight of him before I could do anything about it. But uh, if you hear about a, a landscaping truck exploding on the road, I saw it. I was there first. Oh my God, Bob! Does the Pico need uh, need breadboard power, or can it use just the? Uh, it can use USB just system. USB power. Hmm? Good. Or battery power, or breadboard power, whatever power you want to throw at it, if you do it right. Yeah. 
And I believe if you power it from externally, you should put it on the bus. Is that right? That's right, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 3v3 is for out powering external things from it. Mm -hmm. So you put positive on the bus and negative on one of the ground pins. Mm -hmm. Well, this class is going to be way easier and way less stress because nobody's damn showing up. So that's great. All right. So, do you want to go around the room and introduce yourselves, everyone, <laughs> and why you're here? I'm way too shy for that. Yes, absolutely. Because that would be a good introduction. So when people do join in, they know who we are. All right. Um, right. And when they watch the recording later. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, obviously, you know, Betsy, part of the group, looking forward to um, uh, really getting into making my own uh, actual hardware and PCBs. You know, we've done the badges, but you've done most of the hardware in the past, Bob, and I want to, you know, pick up some of those skills. There we go. That's all I got for me. All right. Uh, I'm just checking uh, my email right now to see if anybody's panicking somewhere. And no. Uh, I guess I'll go next. Yeah, go ahead. Play. Uh, I am a student here, and I do desperately want to contribute to the other, uh, the new badge next year. Uh, for our next DEF CON, and I figured the best way to do that is to learn a little bit about PCB design and all that. So what better way to do that than by learning from the maker of the badge himself? Right on. No pressure. All right, Kevin, introduce yourself. No, I, I'm, I'm Kevin. I don't know anything about hardware. Uh, I'm blissfully ignorant. I, um, I write software. I complain a lot. I yes. drink too, way too much. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, I'm here to learn, learn a little bit of hardware because uh, I really am blissfully ignorant on how that whole process works. So I'm hoping and excited to learn. That's uh -huh. it. Spud, you're next on my screen. Oh, are we introduced? Sorry, I just joined. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Welcome, Spud. Thanks for showing up. Hi, finally. everyone. Hope yeah. you didn't lose too much blood there. No, just, just a little, just, just, you know, to be unconscious. Okay. Uh, it, it's just way more traumatic than it looks, uh, than it actually is. But no, hi, I'm Spud. Uh, I'm here to learn a little bit more about hardware than I already know. And uh, I'm, ex I'm always excited to learn new things. And so I can't wait to come out of this with some education. Cool. And uh, all right, so I got Braden and Scott. Welcome, Scott. Thanks for showing up. Uh, Braden, how about you go next, if, if you can hear me? Crickets. Okay. Well, I can tell you who Braden is. But no, I'll skip that. Uh, I'll let him speak when he wants to. Scott, uh, you want to say anything about uh, what made you sign up and anything like that? I saw the unmute, but no sound. I had major audio issues earlier, so that's fine. Chime in when you want, if you want. Um, you could always put something in the chat too. We have a. Oh, that's right. Um, if you the hit the chat things. box, more than yeah. welcome to type in questions there, introduce yourself, or just interrupt, and we'll make sure you get a chance to talk. Yep. And Braden says he's only auditing. So. Yeah. Cool. Braden is is here only to criticize, and that's that's an important role that somebody has to serve in our group. He's going to stay busy. Yeah. That's for sure tonight. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about your mic, Scott. So this is the this is the first class of our first class. So, yay! Maybe we'll do more of these. Maybe not. <laughs> um, we are going to go through from the beginning to the end of starting with a Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico, and building on it, coding on it, putting components together till you have a working circuit on your breadboard, breadboard. And then we'll help you get through to the point of 
putting it in CAD, designing that circuit, finalizing for fabrication, and then sending it off to China for boards. Or, you know, if you want to send it to Osh Park and get purple boards, that's okay too. But China's way cheaper. So, uh, any questions so far? Crickets, okay. Um, I thought of something, I, like we, we sort of talked through some of this last night, what the plan was. So, step one, you have a Pico. Um, brand new, they don't usually come with headers. You have to put them on yourself, or you can pay more with the headers, right? That helps get on the, the breadboard. I'll show you my breadboard because it's kind of cool. I got a vintage breadboard from like the 70s. It's a, it's a whole hot mess of one, two, three, four, or five, I don't know, five or six long 830 breadboards plus switches and uh, multiple voltages and edge connector connectors. I don't know what the hell they're for. Um, when it works properly, it will power lots of things and I've had it working properly. It's not working properly right now. So right now it's just, just a breadboard. And I've uh, momentarily screwed up my camera because that's what I did. Okay. So uh, step one, I hope you have Thani installed and I hope it works for you. And if it's a brand new Pico, when you plug it into Thani, you may or may not get prompted to install micro firmware. Uh, MicroPython firmware. I did not last night. And the reason is that my default settings for the Sony that I installed for this class, it defaulted to thinking it was looking for an ESP32. So I had to go into settings and tell it that I'm specifically looking for the MicroPython for the Pico. Once I did that, it immediately popped up and said, do you want to install MicroPython firmware when I plugged the Pico in? So I said, yes, and let me share my screen and kind of replicate how that looks because it looks kind of fun. No, 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 no. Maybe next time we'll share the wealth of having people share screens because I realized from uh, church things that one person running the event and sharing screens adds a lot of distractions. I can so, probably pull it up for me if that would make it easier. Oh, you got it. I got it for now, yeah. So you guys can see it just fine? Yes. Okay. So I have a free USB port, yay. So I'm gonna act like this Pico is brand new by holding down the, I think it's boot select, is that what it's called? The white button on the Pico. Hold it down while you plug it in. And then let it go. And so you can't see uh, what, what I'm seeing right now because uh, it's another window that I'm not sharing. But it basically pops up like a drive. Um, and it pops it up as RPI-RP2. And then from there, if you look in our GitHub, we have our current badge firmware, and there's also a UF2 file. There's two UF2 files in there, right? And one is called Flash Nuke. And if you drag Flash Nuke.UF2 to your newly mounted RPI RP2, it wipes anything that's on the Pico and acts like it's brand new. And what that means, so now back in Thani, hit stop, hit stop, hit stop. Yeah, it's not doing it. Let's unplug, plug it back in. Might have to look at those settings again. Nope, it's mounting as a drive again. Should it not? Options. Do you have automatically select the uh, port? Try to detect port automatic. Uh, see, it defaulted back to the ESP32 again. Can you see this? Uh, yep. Okay. So that's that's good. I'm glad this happened because now I can show you. Point it to the Pico. Hit OK. Bam. Automatically. 
just pops up. Install MicroPython firmware for Raspberry Pi Pico. So you install that. Bam. And Close. I didn't get prompted for the automatic install, but I know on that screen you were just at, it lets you hit the install button um, yeah. manually yeah. if you don't get prompted. Right, I, I saw that too. Okay, so now we're here, and this is a this is a serial console to device here, and this is your code window up here. So. So I type in the code window, right? And then what happens if I just hit run? It wants to save the file before it runs. And you can either choose to save it on your computer or directly to the Pico. And, and at this stage, most of what I do is directly to the Pico. So choose the Pico, give it a name and the, the default file uh, that starts running. First file, Kevin, what's the word? Is main.py. Right. It is main.py. Yep. Right. So there, it ran. That's where it prints down in the serial console. So um, so that's the basics of opening up Thani, starting Thani, and starting your first first program. Now it gets crazy from here because Python's got a, a gazillion modules. And MicroPython has a subset of that gajillion modules that are available to you to do anything you want with. Um, I don't know, Kevin, since you already know this stuff pretty well, mm -hmm. would you take a moment and dig up a quick code to do the blink of the onboard LED? Yeah. Sure. And then just that. paste that into the chat or something? Yep. I'm going to. Yeah. I don't know if I can open my chat while I have the screen shared. I don't like Zoom. So we don't usually use Zoom, we use Discord, but Zoom offers recording and we wanted to record. So I'm gonna unshare briefly and grab the data from the chat file when Kevin pulls it up. So any questions so far, any, any, what have I missed? So now you know how to, you know how to initially provision a Pico with MicroPython firmware. And that boot select button also lets you reflash it with something else. And that something else could be flash nuke to wipe everything. It could be the MicroPython firmware itself, could be a more recent version of it. Could be an older version if you have a reason for that. And it could be actual working firmware that somebody has compiled to do something like the two firmwares for our last two badges. That it's all dropped on there the same way. If you take apart one of our badges and hold that button down and plug it in, you'll be able to drag the most recent firmware to it. Yeah, Bob, okay. I went and put in the, just ignore the ticks. I was, I'm thinking I'm in Teams and I can make it code nice, but I can't. That's fine, thank you. Yep. Uh, anybody else, if you if you see that chat, you can, um, you can grab that. I'm going back to sharing screen. And is anyone like physically following along with this stuff? Where's my, oh, I, I actually closed on it, didn't I? Wow, what a dumbass. I thought it was closing the screen share. Oh, display's got a display. Look at that. Hi, my laptop. Not right now. All right. Pico, good. So normally, if you should be able to just stop and restart it. Why doesn't it do that? OK. So if it gets hung up like this and stop doesn't do anything, unplug it and replug it. Anything you have saved will still be there. Um, anything you haven't saved, you know, you might be a little bit screwed. We but, can't see your screen anymore if you're oh, showing it. Oh, not share it? Okay. And not reshared it, yeah. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, can you see it now? Yep. Okay. So when I 
open Thani again, it, it wasn't responding to the stop button. Uh, the stop button generally, usually stops whatever it's trying to do, whether that's communication or program running, not always. And if it doesn't respond to that, you unplug it and plug it back in and then hit stop. And if you get this prompt down here, then you're good to go. So I'm gonna type this in and And does that work? Save to the Pico. Double click main.py to save it there. Yes, I want to overwrite. Oh, look at that. Can you see it? Um, I wonder if I can zoom my camera like I did last night. One second. Zoom. Doing anything? Doesn't look like it's doing anything. Oh. So, <clears throat> what I forgot to do, Bob? <laughs> What'd you forget to do? Is um, this should toggle once, and it should be on. We didn't yep. put a. We, what we didn't do is put a while loop in. Yeah, just, yeah, with some sleeps or whatever. Yeah, we can, we can, we can add I that. Was, I was quick to the punch, so I apologize. So this is just That's a, fine. But I was, I would, I would like to get my. Um, I can write that real quick. Camera yeah. zoomed so that you can see this better. Because I don't, I don't really know if other people are playing along or just watching. So. Okay. AI auto frame? No, definitely don't do that. I'm definitely playing along with it, so. Good. Well, if you're playing little... along, then you know what you're doing, right? Yeah. It helps. It helps uh, reinforce it. I'm just trying to troubleshoot Thani right now, being a little bit of a jerk. Okay. So I can just uh, sort of show you. <laughs> you can see that the light's on, right? Is that showing? No, your screen is sharing again, so we can't see your camera. You can't see both at the same time? Um, let's that is see. so not fair. Um, if there's a way, I'm missing it. Yeah. Anybody else able to? Let's see, fit the window. Let's see. Okay. okay, if I do side by side mode. Okay. That works. So, so if you go up for those who are interested up to the top where view option is and do side by side mode, you're um you can see the videos on the right and then the screen in the middle. I think I put up a little adjustment to the code, Bob, that should blink it. I could be wrong. I didn't test it. I just wrote it. I need to learn how to be able to see the chat while screen sharing, because it's like I'm having to undo it is nerve wracking. Right. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's good. Yep. So let's break that code down. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it take the returns? So I we had to import sleep, which is a function from uTime. Right. All right. So, um, just gonna share the screen again. Great. Troublesome. All right. So we imported pin from machine, which allows you to control pins. We imported sleep from uTime, which is, in Python I think it's just called time. I think a lot of the Python classes in MicroPython start with you. That's correct. Okay. Uh, we define the LED as pin 25. The onboard LED is pin 25. If you're using NeoPixels, they'll go a different way, but we'll talk about that some of, they don't operate the same way anyway. And we're doing a while, a simple while loop while this program is running, turn the LED off and sleep for a second. And see what happens when we 
Look at that. Can you see it? Can you see it blinking? It's a little hard to see. Yeah. You're a little far away. I know. I couldn't get it to zoom. Hang on. Let's see. And my USB cable is not along. Well, you know what I can do? I can do this. I was going to say, I might be able to do mine. Pin. Stuff sitting on stuff, falling over. Yeah, this is not going to work. All right. But you get the idea. That's a quick blink, which is a great first thing to do. Oh, yeah, I got mine. To get some feedback. Hey, look at that. Thank you, Betsy. Sweet. Blink, 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 blink. And that's, that's six lines of code. And now you have a working Pico. And that's before we plug anything into it. That's just a raw Pico on a USB. Now, if you took that same Pico, since this is saved as main.py, main.py executes first. If you took that raw Pico and applied battery power to it or breadboard power to it, took away the USB, of course, um, it would just start blinking right away because that's your main.py. That's your first executing code. And it's it's in the firmware now. That is permanent-ish until you make it unpermanent. So that'll survive removing power, et cetera. Where do we go now? Would it be, I know we talked about doing a MicroPython class later, but just a quick breakdown of the, the MicroPython code. Would that be okay to talk about a little bit? I mean, I kind of went through this. But we could go through another aspect of it. So say I wanted to make a function, right? A class, a function, whatever. I wish Kevin was here and he could do this for me. Um, we can we can we can talk through this. If you hit file new mm -hmm. and you start writing another batch of code there, give me mm -hmm. a give me a brief function, Kevin. So if we do def D E F. Bab, left print, right print, and mm -hmm. okay. enter. And tabbing is very important in MicroPython. That's how we get what we, what we call scope. We'll get into that later, but it's important that you do tabbing when you create a function so that it does it automatically. Correct. And it's everything is defined within a function. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, LED toggle. LED dot toggle? Dot toggle, yep. Yeah. Left print, right print. And then we'll do sleep one underneath it. Or, yeah. And then above uh, def bab, let's add a few spaces <clears throat> and copy in the rest of that code. So from machine. Okay. Import pin. So we can get rid of. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, perfect. So now we'll do a while true, and we'll it's we want to do two spaces between the uh, bab. There we go, and let's put two spaces after eight. And line eight, and one more, and we'll do while true, and true is with a capital T. And colon, yep. And let's do bab, left print, right print, as we're calling it. And if all goes well, this should do the same functionality, but we parameterized it in a function. Okay. So right now, my Pico is still blinking from this program. So I have to hit stop. And then I go back to this program and we'll save it. And it's going to prompt me for a name. We'll call this bab.py. So now we have a function, same program, just turned it into a function, that's all. Why the two spaces, Kevin? Um, it's Pythonic to have two spaces between each function. It's just oh, a standard. Another yeah. purist. Yeah. I know. Okay, so if I hit run while this program is highlighted, it's gonna run this program. If I hit run while main is highlighted, it's gonna run main. 
if you have a dozen programs or is it programs or is it they're modules technically but yeah. modules files whatever if you have a dozen of them up here that, that you're all working on as one cohesive program you, you have to pay attention to what you're running you might run a sub piece that's not what you want it to run so i'm going to run bob.py and look at that i'm blinking again yay blinkity blink blinkity blink blinkity blink so you want to walk through making a module that you can import from another real quick? Sure. So <clears throat> let's say we wanted to have a module called um, Blink. OK. We would, we would create a Blink.py. OK. File new. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll give it a name when I save it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can go back into bab.py and cut that function out altogether. Okay. Yeah, and we'll put it in that new, yep, paste, and we'll control save it as blink.py, for example. Oh, see, it's busy because I didn't stop the program. Right. So stop or control C will also work. And then save it. Save it to the Pico blank that fire. You see, you see here that it it has the other two files. You're looking at the Pico itself. Oh, we should show them the browser too. Um, but let's not ADHD this part. Okay. Not just yet. All right. So now that's that. And how do we call that? Okay. So back in bab.py, right? We're gonna do uh we're gonna put a blank line after line two. And technically, we should have one more blank line just to be okay. And then back on be my Pythonic. Line. Yep. I'm so feeling we'll do, rather Pythonic. We're feeling Pythonic. So we'll do from blink. And we don't need to do the Py extension. It's going to be from blink. So it's from the blink module. So every dot .py file that's not main is a module that you can mm -hmm. import from. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. And from blink, we're going to import our function which is in fact called bab. So now- So I could have a dozen functions in a module and call them individually, or I could import the entire module and have access to all the functions. You could. You don't want to necessarily import the whole module because- it'll Because that's not Pythonic. It'll eat a lot of memory. <laughs> uh, you want to bring in what you need to bring in at the time. But yes, that is, you could do from blank import asterisk, for example. Right, okay. Which I could do now because there's only that one function. You can. Sure. So what Kevin's referring to is that uh, being a microcontroller, there are limits and they are hard limits. Uh, how much memory, Kevin? I think 256K. Braden would know better. I, I think it's 256. So that's, that's the amount of in-program memory that can be used <clears throat> on this thing. Uh, the file system's bigger, but not huge. Not huge. Um, if you build your own with an RP2040 and use external flash, you can go bigger than what the Pico has. Pico has what, two megs of flash? I believe it's two megs. Yep. And that's what the file system sits on, right? This, this file system where we're storing files. So there's in-program memory, there's onboard flash, and in our badge, we're not doing this, but in our badge, we had access to an SD card on the back of the display. So these are different ways to access storage from the Pico. So should I try to run this now? So we're not done yet. So okay. now we've imported the module. But oh, now have... we have to call it. Mm -hmm. So we're okay. going to have to do underneath there, we'll have to do another while true loop. Let's do one more, just one blank line. It's fine. Well, isn't the while true already in there? No, it's not. OK, you're right. right. While true. Mm -hmm. So we'll do while Where true. Where did I just type? Okay. I think it's a little below, like if you scroll down your screen, Bob. Um, oh, is it, oh, it is still there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, Betsy. <laughs> yeah. Good call. Yeah. How did you see that? I, she, she, she's better than all of us. <laughs> she's got like like vision that, that extends beyond the screen. Let me exactly. do this. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> so with, with any luck, if I haven't screwed this up, this should work. Yeah, you want to save it first? Yeah. Um, okay. So this is... This is again, something that I've completely overlooked and I'm very glad this happened. 
So if you go back into blink.py, this is great. So LED is a module itself. And what I failed to do. It's a built-in module. It's, it's a built-in module. But what I failed to do is let blink.py know that LED is an actual thing. So with that said, we might want to refactor um, the machine. We might want to cut that along with, um, yeah, just, I'm sorry, just the machine.py, let's cut that. And let's paste that at the beginning of blink.py and put a few lines down. And let's okay. go back into bab.py and let's go ahead and, and grab the LED definition. So at, this, going there. Mm -hmm. so at this point, we're creating just a simple Python object. So, so in the calling module, those definitions don't carry to a module that's called? It, it shouldn't need to because they're going to be only dependent in that adjacent module. So it should it should work. I could be wrong. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm I'm asking for myself why if you had machine imported, pin imported, and the LED defined here, mm -hmm. why didn't because it know that when you called the function? Good, great question. Because the module itself is completely independent. It could be on another server. It could be on another cloud-based environment. It doesn't matter. But that actual module has to be able to see all of the libraries or modules that it's going to need and import in that specific module. It's going to be gotcha. required. So now we're almost done. One more thing I think we need to do is add a, sl uh, a sleep on line six. Oh, did we already do that? Did we do that? Let's take a look. At okay. I apologize. So we sleep also have to function. Yes. Yeah, so we actually have to copy off or, or copy, or I'm sorry, cut the U time sleep and put that into blank. Yeah. Otherwise, it will. It'll, let's just do it this way so that we can see what's going to happen. Sure. Let's, let's see what happens. I think we know what's going to happen. But, mm -hmm. And we run Bob. Yep. Yeah. Sleep isn't defined mm -hmm. in module blink.py. So you go to blink.py. Well, you know where it's going, what you're going to need. So you take yep. sleep. You put it in here. Mm -hmm. Save it. Yeah, and it's important to run it again, Bob. Yep. Save it. Mm -hmm. And run it. And I got Blinky. Okay. So it's a, it's a lot of information. You just got to keep playing it back. We have the recording. Just keep playing it back and typing it out, and it will start to make sense over this a thousand years. This is a perfect years. little intro. I think, uh, <laughs> I think anybody watching this later is going to realize that A, MicroPython is not that hard, yeah. but there are steps to learning it. And B, we're a wonderful bunch of morons. Am I right? Some of us drink more than others, but yes, that's true. Uh, who? Yeah, I, I'm not drinking tonight. Oh, um, that's very unfortunate. It is unfortunate. I didn't want to be slurry doing all the talking. So we got a few more minutes. What do you want to do now? Do you guys have any questions? Uh, no, I was gonna say, what do you, obviously we picked the Pico for this. What made you choose the Pico and what differentiates it from other microcontrollers? Um, <laughs> or what do you like about it? Oh, that's the greatest question ever. <laughs> so, when we were coming up with the thought for our first badge, um, we had a lot of maybe, kind of, I don't know, let's try this. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. And one of our members got drunk and went shopping and bought a reel of Picos. And that is 480 Picos. So that is why we settled on Pico. But we did come to love it afterwards. It is a it is a fantastic platform, and uh, if I had it with me, I would show off uh, the Elecro set that I won in a Twitter contest a couple of weeks ago. It's a box about yay big. It's just like those Arduino um, 
selections with a bunch of sensors and modules, but it's for the Pico. And it's the, the Elecro Advanced Pico Kit. And I strongly recommend it. It's probably like 30 to 40 bucks at Elecro. And if you if you know who Elecro is, they make the Crow Pie. There's two versions of the Crow Pie that, that basically a Raspberry Pi in a in a case and with a screen looking like a cyber deck. The, the, the second one looks more like a little laptop. The first one looks more like a cyber deck. And it's got lots of modules and sensors built into it. So off topic, that's Raspberry Pi. This is Pico. Here we are. But that's, uh, I love the Pico. So Pico versus Arduino. I haven't found anything too different about the two platforms. Uh, the Pico might be more powerful, right? Uh, the fact that you can run MicroPython on it is great. It's a lot easier to write in than C. Um, the one thing I don't like about it, and I, I, I'm going to say this because I can, um, it's 3.3 volts, right? One of the greatest benefits of the Arduino, at least the Uno, is it'll take whatever voltage you throw at it, because I have one of these here, and I'm using this one to power an RFID uh, door keypad that needs 12 volts. So I'm running 12 volts into the Arduino and then taking that same voltage out to power the RFID door pad. So I wish I could do that. I wish I could port that to the Pico, you know what I mean? Because that would be fun, but I would have to have some sort of voltage converter to do it. Pull 12 out, siphon off five, you know, five-ish to run the Pico. Pico's 3.3, but it's got it's got controls on it so that you can put five into it. So it's fine. Any other questions? Next. Spud, you look like you might have a question. <laughs> All right, maybe not. I don't know how to use Zoom apparently, because I'm trying to figure out how to unmute. No, I don't at the moment. Uh, you unmuted just to tell us you don't have a question. That's, well, you that's asked if I very had polite. A yes, it's very polite. So, um, Scott has a really good question, though. Who? Scott, the, the other in the comments. Oh, I, I don't have the chat up when I hang on. It's he's so. asked um, the differences between or, Arduino C and MicroPython. How is library support like and speed versus reliability or both? Uh, Kevin will tell you that uh, there is no speed compromise in MicroPython on the Pico. Um, because, you know, where people think that it's slow, we find ways to make it fast. <laughs> can I can I comment on that? Or Please do. Okay. So, first of all, the Pico, or I'm sorry, the Arduino ecosystem utilizes at the very core C++, which is dramatically faster than raw MicroPython, dramatically faster. Um, it has a library called wiring, I believe. And I think Braden can correct me on this, but I think it's called wiring. And there's a large community in the Arduino ecosystem that writes great libraries versus modules for C++ um, that you can use and burn firmware. The challenge is <clears throat> it is a little bit trickier when it comes to making something fast and robust. Can it be done? Yes. And there are great Arduino products and it's really a matter of preference, in my personal opinion, which <clears throat> ecosystem you want to go down, whether it be the MicroPython or the Arduino. Now, with MicroPython, the way that we're doing it right now is going to be very slow compared to, this, to C++. I mean, dramatically slower. What we do for our badges is <clears throat> take one step back. When we actually run this program that Bob is showing you right now, what is actually happening is there is a C binary with a MicroPython interpreter. 
that is going through each line and running it the way that we're doing it right now. So it's, it's not slow for us, but as you do some more advanced things, it's slower. What we do for our badge is we take all these pie files and we do a process called freezing. We compile the MicroPython into what we call bytecode. And that gets put into the C binary and run. I have literally stepped through in machine language what's involved. There are dramatically more steps in the MicroPython, even in this way, compared to C. But when it's frozen in memory, I'm sorry, when it's frozen in the binary and you do a real time comparison, it is just about as efficient as you will be with C. It will not be the speed of C or C in any real way when it really comes down to it, but you can be very, very good at it. But you're not doing raster sprites and fancy stuff on this anyway. You, That's you already right. have the limitations of a microcontroller. So what you're doing doesn't generally require the speed of, of C++. It doesn't, but you can be- Unless clever. you do fancy breathing animations on your badge. <laughs> Which we've done in MicroPython, by the way. But I love C. I grew up on assembly and C. I, I, I have a massive respect for C and C++, and I love the language passionately. The challenge is when you really get into building something of substance, there's no way around working with <clears throat> advanced memory management. And in MicroPython, that's taken care of for you. Okay. There are situations where you have a certain uh, form factor or badge, uh, much like the eChallenge coin, for example. You have to use C. There's you, MicroPython will not work on that. So there are time and place to use just C or C++. But with the RP2040, the Pico, and if you are very thoughtful about it, you don't have to worry about all those memory allocations and all of that extra work. And you can, in fact, make it relatively very fast. But I will never say that it's as fast as C. And to expand on answering your question, um, library support is pretty good. Uh, we are finding things for most of the things we do. Kevin has to redo some of it, uh, write some stuff from scratch. But like there, there is a library for last year's display. There is a library for next year's display, uh, you know, we're, we're finding what we need uh, as far as library support. Um, I don't know about everything, but we don't do everything, right? We're finding what we need. And reliability, uh, if it wasn't reliable, we wouldn't be producing hardware badges and shipping them out to hundreds of people because <laughs> they would not like that. Yeah, it's pretty reliable. I've dropped badges and they just keep working. Yay. More hardware reliability than software, but yeah. Uh, will we learn freezing? Um, if we have time, sure. Um, I think I think the plan next week is to, um, to actually breadboard something, uh, put some components together and make things interact in some way. And hopefully everybody's got parts and um, and then after that, we'll get into the KiCad, which is, you know, several episodes heavy. You know, there's a lot to, to digest in KiCad to get to the point from turning this into a final product. It's, it's not a small feat, but we'll try to make it easy-ish and fun. And there'll be recordings so you can go back again and again and again and, until you hammer it into your skull. Anybody else? Anything? Nothing. I hope I didn't miss anything useful. I mean, this this worked out time wise. You're you're good at filler, Kevin. Thank you. I mean, we're we're right around the time I wanted to end this. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm planning on watching the uh, Bake Off after this because it's Friday. I'm probably going to go over the uh, the um, 
recording again because I just got caught up uh, with with uh, troubleshooting my Pico. Good. That. Good. So you can you can manage your Pico now in your in your stuff. Finally, yes. Turns out um, I needed to mount it first. Wouldn't recognize okay. that. You had to manually mount it in Cali. Yep. Yep. Okay. But uh, Sony will recognize it. There's some library issues, but I'm sure I can work that out. Would you um, be willing to share, maybe in the Discord channel, the the steps for mounting it and what you did? Because I haven't messed with it, Cali, but I know people are going to want to, and I might want to at some point. Uh, but I have a new I laptop do. that's dual booting with Cali and Windows, so it'll be fun to play with. So, I'll uh, I'll put something together. Um, I did it through the UI, so I'll look into the CLI commands. I'd either one. Either, either one's fine. Yep. All right. Cool. We'll Actually, if we're talking about Kali and stuff, I know it's unrelated to this class specifically, but I've been slowly learning Linux and I wouldn't mind helping other noobs learn how to teach how to do Linux. Because I've gotten as far as doing creating a whole virtualization from the command line. So nice. So, Using which uh, which platform? Uh um, Kimu. Yeah. 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 The, the superior VM for Linux because all the others are trash. Well, um, it depends on your needs, right? It, it's the only one that I managed to some to get to work for what I needed to do, which is really just run Windows and Linux VMs with this, this is why we settle on shit. Like at work for a specific project, I ended up setting on VirtualBox, mm -hmm. and I I hate VirtualBox with a passion. Oh, I do too. That's because it's not Kimu. it's not a primary hypervisor. It's you know it's it's bogus. It has user land stuff, mm -hmm. but it was the only platform that would let me pass phones through it in the way oh. that I needed to into the VMs. But um, one thing I've been doing on my own is the reason for this is because I want to start creating my own like labs for like reverse for, for malware analysis and stuff. And Are you going to teach those labs through this group? I'd love to actually, honestly. Uh, we would love to have that. I would like, love to learn. I'm still newish, but it's something like I'm a big fan of learning with others along the way, like like group study kind of thing. Dude, I that's, would love that. I would love that's the best way to do it. Yeah, seriously, so, I would love that. And I paid a yeah. hundred bucks so that we have a year subscription to Zoom. So let's let's Ooh, use this shit out. Spender. of it. Yeah. yeah, I'm down. Um, yeah, I'll get something. Um, when I can actually use my other hand. Because uh, because right now I can't bend my finger because I have it so I had to get it to stop bleeding that was the big <laughs> hurdle and also prevent it from making a mess. It's not even that bad of a cut. It's just your finger is the most dramatic appendage. Yeah. Um, so um, next week I might have like kind of like a basic syllabus for the class or something and see like who's interested and then you know I'll decide uh, when. So. But if cool. you guys are interested, I'll definitely start working on something. I'll even like wipe my laptop so that way we can learn from scratch. I would I love mean, that. I anything love we it. do that's productive and helps us learn is better than sitting around a table drinking. I mean, both is fun, but yeah. I but both is fun. Yeah, I, I have to fun. go on. I have to say on the both. I'm on the both. So yeah. yeah. Okay, sit around drinking and learning how to hack stuff. <laughs> that's, when I, that's when I'm best is when I'm inebriated. Yeah. Hey Bob, can you put up the uh, the code in either the chat or somewhere after the recording? Okay. Simple, but yeah. Uh, maybe Kevin will take those notes, and uh, well, I'll take them out of here because I have access to the actual Fani that I put it in. Uh, but yeah, it's basic stuff, and um, that'll go in over. the book when when the when the book comes out. Yeah, send send them over, Bob, and I'll. I'll okay. Yeah. Another recommendation, just. Uh, for like future classes when we do this is like enabling like live transcripts and stuff. So oh, yeah, we did that last night. Why didn't I do that tonight? Yeah, I had a lot of fun cussing into it just to watch my <laughs> words show up on the screen. It doesn't censor. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, it that's doesn't. Gonna... I'll remember that at the next county board meeting. <laughs> so. There's might censor. It might be an yeah. option, but I, uh, I default. Probably, to... Honestly, it probably is, especially if it's a government license. I wouldn't be surprised if that's an option, but um. Yeah, no, I'll I'll put a feeler up and see if anyone else is interested in the Linux class. Cool. Let's let's grow that whole learning section. Let's just keep doing this because this is this is fun. Even if we only had like one outside person in this class, <laughs> it's it's still it's fun for me to go through it and and you know learning different ways and oh, this is a fun practicing part. presenting. I'm, 
I'm oh yeah for sure but I'm definitely excited for this this specific class too like the one we're in right now yeah it's gonna get sweaty yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything witty but all right well unless anybody has anything else uh yeah Scott said he would love to be in that class too so that's great uh watch the learning channels uh we'll open the learning channels to the public so that uh so that you'll catch the announcements when we do this. We'll, we'll get Kevin to pivot on Twitter too when we have another class. We have a platform now, we should use it, right? We have fans. All right, I'm gonna shut down and uh, thanks for coming everybody and see you next week. Yeah, have a good night. Take care.